It's me, Mario! What can I say that hasn't already been said about Super Mario 64? It paved the way for 3D gaming. It has revolutionized video games as a whole, and it's one of the greatest video games of all time. I'm sure you've heard many people say this, and that's because it's true. Super Mario 64 is such a huge piece of gaming history. It's hard to realize nowadays that this game, right here, paved the way for the future of video games and has influenced the industry still to this day. And it wasn't because it was the first major 3D platformer, but it was because it was the first major 3D platformer done right. It had full 360 analog control, fluid and satisfying movement, and a journey inside a mysterious castle filled with discoveries, hidden worlds, and magical moments. Super Mario 64 wasn't revolutionary just because of its 3D mechanics and graphics, but it was praised for its sandbox-like design and the freedom you had roaming around this castle and exploring these worlds at your own pace. It was an experience like none other at the time, and this same experience has impacted so many lives to the point where people will not stop talking about this game. But compared to most games of that era, why is Super Mario 64 the most relevant of them all? How has a 1996 Polygonal Mario blocky hands video game managed to be one of the most relevant games in this day and age? Well, let's start from the beginning. Let's long jump back to the 90s. Video games were evolving fast and the idea of a full 3D dimension wasn't quite fully thought through yet. The Super Nintendo had the Super FX chip that could render 3D polygons at advanced 2D effects, but most of the time the chip was used to simulate 3D rather than rendering full polygons and making full-fledged 3D games. So I uh, hate to break it to you, but F-Zero over here wasn't actually 3D. Yeah, I, I know, it, it's a shocker. I mean, there was Star Fox, but that was pretty limited, and playing at 3 frames per second wasn't the ideal way to play a 3D video game. The 16-bit era, while impressive at the time, still had so much potential, and the industry knew this going forward. Ugh. Fast forward a couple years to 1995 when both the PlayStation and Sega Saturn were released in North America, and... Let's just say the PlayStation was mediocre at best for the first couple years, and the Sega Saturn fell Sega Flattern on its face. <laughs> but who cares? The Nintendo 64 came out the next year and blew people's minds. Mario 64 took 3D gaming to a whole new level. You weren't just running and jumping to a simple end goal no more. You were triple jumping, long jumping, back flipping, moving north, moving south, moving east, west. You want to talk about groundbreaking? Well, Super Mario 64 was just that. There were many questions back when this game was released, like how does this all work? Why is there an in-game camera? And what the heck is this? Today, we don't think twice about having analog joysticks or controlling a player's camera inside a 3D space, but you gotta remember, this was all new at the time. No one had ever experienced anything quite like this before. It was both mechanically and visually stunning. But I think what also surprised players was the game's general design and the amount of freedom given to you. It didn't matter what order you played each level in, or what order you collected each star, or even the way you collected each star. The game gave you basic rules, but aside from those small rules, you could do really whatever. With this freedom, it gave you a sense of curiosity, and encouraged you to explore these worlds. There are so many hidden secrets and discoveries within the game, and expands your imagination. And that's why this game is extremely memorable. Peach's Castle is by far the most memorable hub world in all of gaming, period. Remember finding Peach's slide for the first time, or wondering what this pit of weird liquid was, or finding Snowman's Land hidden within a wall? It's safe to say that Mario 64 wasn't revolutionary only for its 3D mechanics, but it was also the way they translated Mario into a 3D space, with game design encouraging you to explore and filling the world with hidden secrets, expanding your imagination to no end. So to recap, 
Mario 64 was the first of its kind, a full-fledged 3D platformer. It gave you lots of freedom to roam around the world and experience the game how you wanted to experience it. But arguably, the biggest takeaway from Mario 64's history was how Mario controls. I think Nintendo's biggest focus when making this game was how to make Mario feel good. Because if you're given the freedom to explore these bigger places with platforming gaps and open spaces, you gotta make the feeling of running around itself feel fun. The N64 had an analog thumbstick built in, giving a full 360 range of motion to Mario's moveset. Along with that came a wide variety of different jumps, flips, and just general ways to move around. Of course, you got the triple jump, long jump, wall jump, jump kick, backflip, side flip, dive, the list goes on. With such a wide range of movement options, it makes running around each course feel fun and super satisfying. It also makes for a great toolkit for collecting each star. Remember what I said earlier about this game's design? It didn't matter what order you played each level in, or what order you collected each star, or even the way you collected each star. The beauty of both Mario 64's moveset and design is that it doesn't matter how you collect each star. You just do it. Yes, there's intended ways to collect them, but with the amount of options you have up your sleeve, it's easy to figure out different ways to obtain them or cheese your way to them. And it's just so satisfying pulling off some of these tricks like, boom, thanks, oh, oh, it feels so good. And depending on how skillful you are at the game, you can pull off some crazy maneuvers and stunts and makes the game very optimizable. Which leads me to my next segment. Time to bring out the summoning salt vibes for this segment because we're about to talk a bit about one of the most fascinating, impressive, and the biggest speedrunning community to this day. Super Mario 64's moveset is so optimizable it can make for some crazy movement and stunts that you didn't even think were even possible. And when you see all the tricks and moves and jumps come together in one single run, it's truly an amazing sight to see. So how does this contribute to Mario 64's relevancy? Well, Super Mario 64 is currently the biggest speedrun game at the moment. It has over 2,700 players spending across all its categories according to speedrun.com, and it's currently one of the most viewed speedruns. I think what sets Super Mario 64 apart from other speedruns is its movement alone. First of all, it's so satisfying to watch, and second, it's so satisfying to do, which explains the amount of runs submitted to the website. The game is all about movement, getting from point A to point B. There's not a lot of dialogue, not a lot of story progression, you just run around and collect stars. It fits the speedrunning formula almost perfectly. Like I've mentioned before, it's extremely satisfying pulling off some of these tricks, and a lot of them take extreme precision and timing to do, and makes those top runners even more impressive and fun to watch. Even I've gotten to a little speedrunning myself lately, and all I'm gonna say is, I ain't no pro or anything, let me tell ya. Oh man, we're doing it! <laughs> do it again, let's do it. Dude, I'm actually hyped. Oh my gosh! Oh my... Oh my gosh! No! Are you... Oh... Oh my gosh. 
I I'm honestly surprised I even PB. Speedruns of this game date back all the way to 2004 and have since evolved into one, if not the most beloved speedrun of all time. It holds a special place in speedrunning history and is still making speedrunning history. There are runs of this game constantly being attempted in all its categories and the amount of time and skill and dedication put into this game still amazes me. I mean, the community has pushed this game to the absolute limits, finding the best and efficient ways to collect stars. Backwards long jumping up staircases to clip through walls, getting the blast away the wall star without a cannon in Womp's fortress. There's been so much optimization in the community, it blows my mind. But it all comes down to the movement of Mario and how Nintendo translated Mario into a 3D space. Yes, this community is crazy impressive. With the history behind Super Mario 64 and how they designed Mario's satisfying and optimal movement, the speedrunning community has done so much for the game and has optimized it to its fullest it seems like. But from what I've learned from watching any Summoning Salt video, it's that anything can change. But with playing the game casually and speedrunning the game as fast as possible, you can only do so much with the core game itself. Which leads me to my third and final segment of the video. There was no game quite like Super Mario 64, and there still isn't to this day. The way Mario feels, the way the game looks, it's beloved by so many people. But you can only play the game for so long until it gets a little old, and again, there's no other game quite like it. And it wasn't like there was a straight up sequel that we could go play instead, and, and, I'm, and I'm talking like Mario 64 graphics and physics, none of this sunshine stuff. People were hungry for more Super Mario 64 content. But what if someone hacked the game and just made their own Mario 64 adventures? It wouldn't have to be on the original console, but what if someone just straight up ripped the game engine and made something new out of it? I know hacking and coding your own stuff into an old N64 game from the 90s isn't a super simple task to do, but what if? And that question leads us to the present day. The ROM hacking scene is currently booming at the moment. So many amazing hacks are being created for this game, and the tools and programs needed to make these hacks are getting easier as time goes by. But for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, a ROM, in simple terms, is just the form of data. So to be more specific, a Super Mario 64 ROM is a form of all its game data. I'm talking textures, models, music, objects, the whole shebang. And when someone modifies a ROM and assembles its own creation out of it, it's known as a ROM hack. For the people that don't know much about the ROM hacking scene, here's a history lesson for you. Now the first major ROM hack was made back in 2009 titled Super Mario 64 The Missing Stars. In today's standards of ROM hacking, this hack looks pretty dated, but it was fairly impressive for its time. It had a custom day and night cycle, and you could even play as Luigi. It only had 38 stars to collect, and like I mentioned before, it's pretty dated in terms of textures and design. But it wasn't until a couple years later in 2011 when we would see a Mario 64 ROM hack that was unlike any other hack at the time. A hack that was both ambitious and impressive for its time. Super Mario Star Road. This hack is almost like the sequel we never got to Super Mario 64. An all new 120 star adventure with custom objects, music, enemies, new level design. This hack was insane. It's one of the most well known hacks today and for good reason. It feels very similar to Mario 64's design. There's plenty of secrets to find, new worlds to explore, and new stars to collect. It's obvious that this hack set the standards very high for the ROM hacking scene, and those standards have helped shape the future of ROM hacking going forward. A couple years later in 2013, a creator by the name of Kaze came into the ROM hacking scene with a hack that really wasn't anything special. I mean, compared to Star Road, it wasn't the greatest. But little did people know that this hack would be the start of something big. Kaze kept making hack after hack, Mod after mod, full on programming custom objects into the game, gradually getting better and better at hacking the game to the point where it felt like he could add anything he wanted to Mario 64. 
Finally, in 2016, he released the biggest, most impressive, most insane ROM hack anyone has ever seen. Super Mario 64 Last Impact, and oh my groceries, this hack is crazy. He programmed new enemies, new levels, new power-ups. It was nothing the ROM hacking community has ever seen before. The hack itself took two years of development to complete, which is a ton of dedication for just a ROM hack. Fast forward to the present day, and he's still making insane ROM hacks. Currently, as of writing the script, he's working on Super Mario 64 Land, and it's looking to be one of his bigger and better hacks by far. With the amount of ROM hacks being made today and how much easier it's gotten to make these hacks, content creators have taken the opportunity to push the community even further. I guess we can add this into the segment too. It's like, okay, there we go. From Simple Flip's ROM hacking competitions to K's just showcasing what Ollie can do in Super Mario 64, content creators have helped popularize ROM hacking. ROM hacking is used nowadays to make challenge videos, meme hacks, or just interesting concepts for Super Mario 64. And some people, like K's, have made a career just by hacking and modding this game. It's crazy how much the ROM hacking community has grown over the years, from making small texture changes and simple course designs, to making full-fledged games with mods and custom objects. The community has pushed ROM hacking to a whole new level with this game, and it's still going strong today from what I've seen. Well, as you can see, Super Mario 64 is still relevant today for many reasons. So many people love this game for what it is to them personally. Whether it's because of the game's history and the nostalgia they have for it, or maybe it's the way the game controls and how optimal and satisfying it is to speedrun it. Or maybe it's because of the ROM hacking scene bringing new ways and adventures to play in a Mario 64 format. All these factors play a huge role in Mario 64's relevancy, and are helping Mario 64 to still be one of the most relevant games in the Nintendo community after 20 years of its release. Thanks so much for watching everybody, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, it helps the channel out a lot. Again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.